that chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. You can find it on the front of your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. I'll give you a second to find it in your pew Bible. Let us be attentive to a word from our Lord. For I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. The former thing shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy, and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their, lake, their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall, they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food, shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on my, on all of my holy mountain. This is the word of our Lord. Praise be to God. As I was preparing for this sermon, I was trying to figure out the last time I preached on this text, or, or when it came out, when it came up, and I, it struck me, it was about four years ago, and I think there's three people in here who's at least heard me preach on this text before. Uh, it was four years ago in March. Heather, Blinka, Dale, Screen Lines. Okay. So, so, yeah, we've heard this. Now I'm not doing the same thing. <laughs> Pretty close. Um, the rest of you haven't heard it. <laughs> but it, it, it struck me in the time that, that the, the last three and a half years um, since I preached at, it was First Presbyterian in Grinnell, uh, my neutral pulpit, uh, the new things that have happened. The new things that have happened in my life, the new things that are, I guess, our lives, the new things that have happened in the life of this church, the changes that have been made, the, 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 the working to listen to the Spirit, to hear the way God is calling us forth into the new creation, the new thing God's doing. We moved from Georgia. We, we moved from an apartment to a house. We, we have uh, we've done a lot of new things. We have, we started the, we restarted the, Connections slash, I don't remember what it was before program. Good news, thank you. Uh, the good news program, it was on Wednesday nights we were doing it when we got here, and then we changed it to Wednesdays after school, and then we changed it to Tuesdays. And, and the new thing that God's doing with that, with 50 kids in our space, and, and, and the youth that are coming, and, and I'm sure it's new for you to have a pastor who coaches track and field, because like, where is he in the spring? He's never around. I'm sorry about that. But the, the, the new ways, the, the, the ways the community is being formed, the new things that are happening around us. Over the course of my life alone, there's been quite a few new things. The ebb and flow of life is, is, is interesting. The, the way life moves and changes, the way life goes from good to bad to good to bad, or it just plateaus sometimes and stays it, it, it good enough. Or just rough for some of us. God says, I'm, I'm doing a new thing. I'm creating a new thing. Be aware, open your eyes, see the new thing I am doing, and be part of the new thing. I'm creating a new heavens and a new earth. I'm creating Jerusalem to be a joy and its people. Oh, its people to be a delight. Life is not stagnant, it's not stationary. It, it does not sit still and stay the same. It's just 
not always the same. It's, it's bold and sometimes the changes are subtle. They happen constantly. See, for the Israelites, the changes happened constantly. Carl did work there. He's, Carl did like the best job of a children's sermon leading into mine on my life. Amen. Go home, Carl. Thank you very much. Creation, the fall, Abraham, Moses, and they, and we mess it up. Okay, just, just remember that. I'm not going to make you repeat it over and over, but one more time. And we mess it up. Thanks, Carl. I, didn't even, I wasn't expecting to use that, but good job. Over and over again, we as a people seem to fall short. We're doing Romans in, in Sunday school, and we're all falling short of the glory of God. We, we do that. We, we fall short, and we mess it up. We demand a king. And that king wasn't so great. And then we get another king, and he's a bit better, but he doesn't do such a hot job either. But we continue to, to, to make choices. And the Israelites were the same way. They made these choices. And they, they stopped following God. They rebelled against God. And in their rebellion, they forgot God. They worshipped themselves. They worshipped idols. And, and then they didn't take care of the people. And so they go to exile. And that's where we find ourselves now. We find ourselves exile. Not, not us, but in our text, I, the Israelites. Exile. Coming home from exile. And God's making promises to them again. God's saying, listen, you guys have been in exile. You, you are marched to Babylon. You watched your loved ones but die by the side of the road, and, and the Babylonian soldiers made you leave them there. You just stop in time to give them a proper Jewish burial. Which you know what means they don't get to go on to the next life. But God says, you're coming home. And when you come home, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do something miraculous. It's going to be incredible. See the new thing I'm doing. When we come home, you will inhabit. You will live in homes. You won't live, you won't build homes for someone else, but you will live in the homes that you build for yourself. You will, you will reap the crops for yourself, not for someone else. God has told them that. They will inhabit their land again. They will have children that don't, aren't killed or die of calamity. That the old will grow old. The prophet reminds them of the God that they had forgotten. And reminds them of the God who has not forgotten them. And that God says, I will do something new even when you mess it up. And I will do something new even when you mess it up again. And I will continually make something new out of you, out of this people, out of this creation. I will continually to mold you, the potter and the clay. I will continue to make you something because I am in control. God, the prophet says, it reminds us of that. The Lord says... This is the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out a chariot and a horse, an army and warrior. They lay down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, they're quenched like a wick. Isaiah reminds them of what God has done for them. Part of the seas, brought them to the promised land, the land flowing in milk and honey, gave them the king they wanted, kingdom they wanted. Remember, God says, how I spread the waters and you passed through. Remember how I commanded you to put the blood over the doors and so that you were passed by. Remember how I brought you home at last. Before we go to the new creation, before we move our lives forward, it doesn't hurt to look at what God has done in the past because guess what? Hindsight is 2020. We don't recognize God in the moment we go about our business, don't we? Well, that was fortunate. Boldly charge forward. Maybe a week, maybe a year, maybe some time later we look back and go, oh, that was unfortunate. That was God's word. But there's no such thing as a coincidence. We don't believe in coincidences. There's no happenstance. It's, it's 
God's work in our lives. God's hands are in our lives, moving and working. Now, I'm not telling you to live in the past because that's probably one of the worst things that we can do. Oh, back in my... I do this all the time in connections now because they get... Well, they're little kids. Huh? Oh, back in my day... They don't appreciate it. I think it's hilarious. Back in my day, oh, back in my day, and I'm 34. We do that, right? We long for the days of yore when, when it was good. Everything was perfect, right? It's his problem. When we long for the days long past, we, we miss what God's doing now, what God's prepping to do. We get in the cycle of, oh, how it used to be. Oh, it was the best back when. Or insert, this younger generation is a bunch of... They've been saying that since the dawn of time, by the way. This younger generation is a bunch of... They don't know how to... Oh, these... What, Gen Xers and these millennials. And these, everybody said it about every younger generation below them. Maybe two below. But if we're reminded in Formed by our past. We take a look back and see. Spend a moment to reflect and we can move forward. It enlightens us to see how God is working and moving and the new thing that God is doing. We change, we adapt. It doesn't mean that we just become all for something or, or we just we just give in, but we, we're able to recognize what's going on around us. We find a way to step into the changes. Because we believe that God is in control in some sense, then we have to believe that God's in control of those changes that happen around us, the changes that are happening in our world, the changes that are happening in ourselves. Change. I know it's hard. And I'm not saying we're just going like, to start doing all sorts of crazy wonky stuff in church because I don't think that's a great idea. But we change internally, not just externally. The changes that we make, that we work on in our lives are hard. It's difficult. When sometimes a tradition doesn't work anymore, it's a tradition. Our feelings are wrapped up in it. Our, our memories are wrapped up in it. Man, we used to do this, and it meant so much to me, but it doesn't mean I'll work anymore. And it, it wounds. It's not easy. A new creation is not just an easy thing to step into, because it's new, it's different, it's... It's a change in us. But we as Presbyterians, we are reformed. Oh, come on, please, anyone? 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 Not just my wife? Okay. We are reformed and always being reformed. We changed at one point. Because we saw the way that things were working, we, 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 we boldly stepped forth to try something new as faithful believers in Christ. Uh, Luther and I nailed the theses to the door and he said, it's not working anymore. No, it's not working. Not doing the rhyme. I don't know where that came from. But it's not working, so we need to change. So we've got to reform. And yet we still do the reform. We still do the work that it takes. It's part of that new creation that God's making each of us into. Paul says that all that are in Christ are a new creation. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Isaiah says, let me get it exactly right here. For I'm about to create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. God places experiences and people in our lives, places new ways of being in our lives so that we can experience and grow. We move forward, not sit and look back, but we move forward. Faith, we talked about today in Sunday school, is, is active. It's a, it's a movement. It's not just... I like Jesus. I'm going to go sit in the corner. But it's... Jesus is changing me constantly. It's in the same way with our world or our churches. We look around to see how God's moving in a new direction. Where is God working? Are we invested in that? Are we going to be part of it? 
Are we going to be part of the new creation? Are we going to let it go by us? Where is God moving? How is God working? How can we be part of it? That's the greater question. How can we be part of it? How can we be engaged in that new creation? Because here's how the Spirit works. With us, for us, to us, and in spite of us. The Holy Spirit will work around us if we're unwilling to work with it. It's just going to go right by. Fine. Moving on. I'll go to the next person who wants to be engaged in this. So we've got, to, we've got to sit and figure out how can we be part of this redemptive work for the world? How can we be part of the redemptive work in ourselves and one another? How can we keep alert to see the ways the Spirit's working? Bringing about the new heaven and the new earth. Jesus always said, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's present. It's active. It's here. Let's be part of it. The prophet says, speaking for God, I'm about to do a new thing. I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth. It's not just about some wonderful place far off in heaven. But it's about an active presence now. No more vain labor. No more reaping for someone else. No more sowing. No more backbreaking work to be exploited. But we, we come together and we see all people as beloved children of God and we work together. We work together to love and serve the Lord and serve one another. To change the words no more hunger. No more homelessness. But abundance. An abundance in recognition for all people. Brothers and sisters, God says, I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. Are we going to be part of it? Are we open to being part of it?